You put your mouth in it and you blow a raspberry. It's step one. There you go. Is this really your first time? It really is my first time. Some people take half an hour, an hour just to get the first note. So you're off to a flying wow, start. Wow, exciting. OK, so there's our basic note. There it is. OK. <sighs> Got to get my applause from the control Got to get my breath together here. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> so very kind of you. OK, it's, it's going to get harder from here. <laughs> of course. <laughs> OK, the first thing we usually do to start making the sound more interesting goes back to what you said earlier about it sounding sort of like tube and throat singers. So you can shape your mouth to shape the harmonics of the sound. So I'm just going to blow that and then I'm going to go sort of swirl the tongue around, sort of make it from an open mouth to a tighter mouth. Give that a go. Then you're running out of air. Ran, and ran out of air. That was, so that was the other thing when, when we were watching your earlier performance. I kept thinking, when, when, when does the breathing occur? We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. But um, since you demonstrated it right there, there's another thing you can do on it. Rather than just a low note, you can tighten up your lip and play a trumpet on it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, almost like a fifth and an octave there. Yep. There it is. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So it was interesting what you did before. You hit it on accident at the very beginning because you were you were trying too hard. You were too tight right, when right. you started. <laughs> so you actually. <laughs> Which is, again, good. A lot of people have to work really hard over a long period of time to get that transition between the high note and the low note. Because you can do fancy stuff like OK. The next thing we got to do is add our voice. OK. So here, the joke I always say when I'm doing presentations is sometimes it sounds like I'm screaming into the instrument while I'm playing right. it. And what I'm doing is I'm screaming into the instrument <laughs> while I'm playing it. <laughs> There's uh, a reason why, it's why it makes sounds you like think that. that. And that's actually the whole thing about the instrument is um, listening and imitation gets you a long way. Sure. Usually sure. what it sounds like I'm doing, if you imitate it, just wow, 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 probably what I'm doing. Pretty cool. So I'm going to blow the note and okay. I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, you get it, oh, oh. So try to blow your note and go. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm trying to push the air yeah, instead, of air instead of vocal instead of vocalizing. Yeah, you can also do more mellow things with it. Um, I usually demo with Mary had a little lamb, just humming it along, basically. Falsetto? Interesting. So that's adding the voice. Um, what you were just doing, instead of using your voice, was pushing, pushing a lot of yes, air yes, yes, from your stomach that. muscles, which you can use to make rhythm. So one of the basic stomach muscle rhythms that I like to teach is ha ha he, ha ha ho, ha ha he, ha ha ho which sounds like this. Just try that much. Okay. It's pretty advanced we're getting right now. <laughs> and what you're doing is typical, so you just haven't developed the embouchure. This is the, the typical uh, Western terminology for developing the lip to play the instrument. Sure, so. and it, and it kind of makes me think after after having done this a little bit, it, it makes me think of the trombone a little bit because mm -hmm. you've got a, a, a much larger uh, entry point than a trumpet or yeah. or some other brass instrument. Exactly. Yeah, lots of trombone players 
can cross over as well. Right. <laughs> right. I did my Fulbright in 2003 over there. There was another guy named Stuart Dempster who did a Fulbright in 74 who was a trombonist and has a book on trombone technique that has an appendix that talks about applying didgeridoo technique to trombone. Um, and I should just really quickly show the flashy version of the stomach muscle oh, great. double great. pumping. So you can really do that fast. Um, two more things we'll talk on. Yeah. Technique. So the tonguing is the next main way to do rhythm. Okay. So I'll do uh, the basic rhythm I teach there is down, duck a down, down, duck a down, down. Nice. Duck -a, -down. a little funk happening. <laughs> So just try that down, duck it down, down. That's the basic idea. <laughs> yeah. The so breathing, I want to breathe. I want to breathe that's so bad. I want tonguing. to breathe. That's, the, that's, that's after the tongue. But I should just say that what you're doing, again, is typical. It's just because the lip isn't developed yet. So the more you're developed on holding down the tone, the easier everything else is to do on top of it. So it's, there's a little chicken or egg thing there. Like you want, you want to get to doing the fancy stuff, but you can't do it until the tone is there. And yeah. Um, so just the flashy version of tonguing really quick before we talk breathing. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And you, now you made me think of uh, my friend Danny Stazzola, who is an amazing beatboxer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people doing beatbox didgeridoo. And I days. could, I could, I will be suggesting to him that if he <laughs> hasn't given it a try, that he explore it. Yep. And, and if for no other reason than just the breath control. Yep. Because he's amazing the, the, the amount of sound that he can produce with his mouth and through percussive sounds and movements all the while staying breathing yep. through the entire performance. Okay, how much time have we got here? Uh, I bet we got as much as much time as we want, says okay. director Caitlin Burris. Perfect, all right. She's the boss. Thank you, Kate. Thank you Caitlin. <laughs> um, so breathing, uh, the way we usually learn it here is with what I call the bagpipe technique. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing bagpipes, you're not actually blowing directly through the reeds. Right. You blow into the bag, the bag, you squeeze it, and that blows through the reeds, the stored air. So basically on the didgeridoo, you can store air in your cheeks. So right now, I'm going to just seal my mouth in it and go. <laughs> so I'm playing it for a second with no lungs. So you can actually breathe in through your nose to fill your lungs Fire. while you squeeze stored air out of your cheeks. So I'll just do that squeeze with a breath in. And so the circle, it's, it's called circular breathing, is the term we normally use. So I'll be blowing with my lungs, then I will fill up the cheeks and do the squeeze, and then blow again. So beach balls, air mattresses, half the time. Right. Great. <laughs> Um, so in the so old days, anyway, before we, got, uh, before we had pumps to blow those yeah. things up. So I'll just do some slow breaths like that. So you can basically play forever, as long as your lips will hold out. So the way you can feel what it's like, it's sort of hard to get that coordination quickly. Um, but you can just breathe in and out through your nose. You know how to do that. Puff the cheeks out with air. Just keep breathing in and out through the nose. And sometime, you know you're breathing in through your nose. Use your fingers to cheat and pop that air out of your cheeks. So there, you got air in through your nose and out of your mouth at the same time. Interesting. interesting. So doing that a few times helps you feel what that moment Get of the that sensation breath is of like. It. And then you have to switch to doing it with your cheek muscles. And then you have to make the circle. <laughs> yeah, you're on your way. So the circle then is. So you weren't getting air out there, which is again. Right. Yeah. Part. Yeah. And it so is. So then you can sort of do like. Pra it is a conscious mind it. thing. There's there's yeah. really no intuition about it. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's sort it's of. Really the, 
it, it's, it's one of those riding a bike sort of things. Like, it seems impossible until you do it, and then it's easy and you never forget how. <laughs> Indeed. It's just a coordination trick. And then you can play forever. And, and what becomes more interesting is when you're first learning, you think, I've got to get that breathing so I can play it and keep it going. But later it just becomes you play with your breath. So you just right. breathe rhythm, right, like beatboxing, right, as you're saying, right. you breathe rhythm, and that's how you play it. Because it becomes not about capacity. It's not about, oh, I'm, I'm not holding my breath underwater. I'm it's continuing. It's constant in and out. Yeah. Yep. So cool, man. Uh, any place you would send folks online that's a um, great resource if they want to learn more about um, did you read anybody in this area can contact me I do lessons um, oh, cool gingerroot.com is my gingerroot.com two R's gingerroot gingerroot records my label I started a long time ago can't remember 19 years something like wow. that and I should mention in plug news yes tomorrow night I am going to be uh, doing my show that I call A Personal History of the Australian Didgeridoo um, at the Weber County Library Southwest Branch in Roy. In Roy! And I have nice. two more Weber right. County Library appearances over the next month in um, Pleasant Valley, is it called? The sort of Pleasant, Pleasant Grove? No, Pleasant, it's uh, the sort of South Weber. Oh, of area. course, of course, of course. Pleasant Weber's Valley? Not have and then up in... Huntsville, is it? Mm -hmm. Up the mountain. So I can't remember the dates offhand, but they're on my website. But gingerroot.com. Ginger fantastic. Uh, and of course, the Weber County Library. So those are my, my only performances locally coming up anytime soon. Uh, and that's a, it's a very fun show. I, I use a projector. It, it's, I mean, who doesn't love a good PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, for one pretty thing? much. We're yeah, a, everybody, we're given a choice between a concert and a PowerPoint presentation. People would choose PowerPoint. So anyway, it's a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> and performance where I basically tell my history of learning the didgeridoo. I play the vacuum cleaner that I first started on and play pieces along the way of the story that show my development with it all the, all the way to when I moved to Australia, where I was for five years, and, and then talk more about the origins. And it's a fun show. Sounds fantastic. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for giving me my first experience with a didgeridoo. Gingerroot.com. Mm -hmm. And should we, uh, should we play our way out, my friend? All right. So nice to see you. Here we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with more.